great week. Um, this week I was still talking about faces but turning it into just a lesson about colour and a lot of little tips and things that have helped me with, especially with face um, shadow colour. I had one comment on Facebook about one of the portraits that I did and one lady was asking, oh, she wasn't asking, she was saying I wished I knew how to add colour into shadows. Uh, what I want to talk to you about, um, whether it's watercolour or acrylic or oils even, just to expand that colour palette a little bit to get a little bit more excitement or feeling into your portraits. One of the good things about colour is that you can influence an entire image by one little area of colour, especially with the face. So, so when you add magenta to ultramarine blue, you actually get a really vibrant purple. Then with the purple, I add in burnt sienna and touches of white. What burnt sienna does is it pulls down the vibrance or the prettiness of that purple and it makes it more sedate so that I can use it on a realistic portrait and the skin tones don't look crazy. If you just tweak it that little bit more by adding in the purplish tones or even the maroon sort of tones, so less ultramarine blue, more magenta and burnt sienna, that tiny bit of colour influences the glow and the feel of the whole portrait. So for example, this portrait of my son. But you can see when I go into the shadowy areas here, where I've put in more purplish tones into the skin, and especially here on the neck. So that's my usual combination of burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, and magenta, quinacridone magenta. When you have a combination of those three colours, I'll put those names up. Just, and obviously a bit of white, um, but just so you know, it looks The right. ultramarine blue is a cool blue, so what I mean by that is when you use it for Um, so moving on from a realistic example, so in this instance, again I still have a subtly light side and then I have a shaded side. You can see I'm still actually using the same combination of colours. That is because yet again, even if the skin's slightly different in tone, it doesn't matter. The, it's what you do to the brain when you pick up a colour that is a huge influence. When you start to add in things that aren't so realistic, like bright blue hair, or the skin might be really highly colored, then you can go bolder, and it actually looks really, really effective. So if you are playing with color, um, just remember that what surrounds that color can influence the strength of your shadows. So in there, I'm not giving vibrance, you like in the um, saturation of them, how pretty they are as to how dull they are. And then recipes like, oh, two tablespoons full of ultramarine, you know, one teaspoonful of this, because it depends on what you're doing. It depends on the, the, the colours of the face and everything. But if you keep those three colours in mind, plus white, then have a little play. Um, look at the colours. Remember, ultramarine blue is a very deep, dark colour. So it's, it's going to darken the shadow colour. Remember that orange and blue are opposites on the colour wheel. So a brownish version of orange is burnt sienna. In fact, it's orange with blue already added. So you're thinking of opposites, orange and ultramarine blue, they dull each other and cancel each other out. So when you add ultramarine blue to burnt sienna, you're going to pull it away from the vibrance of this color into more of a sedate, dull, brownish color. One more step of adding punch to a portrait. This is a good example of extreme light. So you'll find here that I, even though I've used acrylic, 
I've used extreme light and shade here. Again, this is acrylic watered down, so it looks like watercolour. But what that allows me to do is I put washes of burnt sienna. Just you can see the, the top of the nose here and on the side of the face. Let that dry and then I've washed over it. But look at this shadow. It's not our purpley, pinkish shadow. This is actually a shadow of Payne's Grey with a touch of ultramarine in it. So something different. But what it does is it really pulls down the light. I don't want to see any colour in the light in this case. I just want it to push back and I want the face and the sunlight to be popping, popping out. The feature is really here is her hair coming down and then the sunlight and the pop of colour on the bottom. So don't think that you have to mix up a heavy strong colour for a shadow and this was just applied as a wash once the underlying layers were dry. Payne's Grey is a really um, well used colour in faces and portraiture as well. Um, my go-to is ultramarine blue purely because I like the, the little bit of purplishness that it brings in. Whereas Payne's Grey is more of a neutral bluey black if I had to just generally describe it. So it doesn't really give me, if you look at um, the, comp like the bo both in comparison, whoopsie, it, it still gives you an instant feel of shade but it doesn't give you that little bit of vibrant colour so and I mean there's nothing to say one's better than the other it's just what you feel like you want to do basically. Um, the last one I want to sort of show you just as a quick example is harmonious colours and then we're going to go fully abstract or stylized in the fact that the way the face is shaded is, is not really reflective of realistic colouring at all. And so in this instance, um, I just wanted to create something groovy with this particular colour palette. So I still wanted to show shadow and I could have even gone very maroon on this but then I would have put more blue into the hair because I wanted that point of difference. But can you see how the colour, just because it's got that, and that's just ultramarine blue with a tiny, tiny bit of burnt sienna to tone it down a little bit. But there's nothing that screams, oh, it's wrong, it's the wrong colour, even though it does jump out as different to the rest. But the brain actually just sees it as shadow and shading. Just like I've used, the way I've used these washes here, the position of them is more important than the colour because your brain actually looks at something like that and goes, oh yeah, the sun's coming from over here and that's just shading on the face. It doesn't worry about it, essentially. And because I wanted to keep it all tonal and calming, um, yeah, I, I didn't worry too much about that being a particular colour. Yeah, I hope this has inspired you and helped you a little bit. Um, if you have questions, one thing you might have a question for me about is there's a lot of different brands out there with paint. So, I mean, watercolour to, you know, I love Golden's, um, it's called Iridescent Copper. And then I've got Metallic Copper and they're so different in colour when you paint with them. But they're both called copper so you know there's so many different brands if you have questions just let me know the name of the paint that you're talking about and i know a lot of paints so hopefully I've, I've i'm familiar with that brand and i can tell you if there's a bias because some of the cheaper paints don't have a really true um ultramarine blue it, it has some of them even have a little touch of white in it um, so it, the pure ultramarine blue should be a very strong dark colour. Okay. I hope that's been helpful and um, have a lovely week. Let's be creative and yeah, just have a good week. The world's full of sad, horrific things. So I hope that just for a few minutes you can be not thinking about them.